Hey everybody, it's Scott Simcoe Spring Service and today we are diagnosing a Hendrickson HAS suspension. There's going to be a whole bunch of uh, numbers going across the screen somewhere around here and it's going to be uh, all the different model numbers. They're all the same basically, different springs, different ride heights, different spacer blocks, but they're all basically going to be the same Hendrickson air ride system. So, super, 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 super common suspension. You can get these on International, the Western Stars, and Peter Builds, and Kenworths, and you name it. Uh, it's been around forever. We've done hundreds and hundreds of these things, so we're gonna go through and what we look for. This one's got a couple of different things that are wrong. It's coming in for a service, and we're gonna go and uh, see if things are safe, not safe, or just you need some maintenance. So we're gonna go take a look at everything and uh, give you my opinion on what should be fixed, what shouldn't be fixed, and uh, what's safety issue and what's not. So let's get to it. Okay, so here's your suspension. You have your leaf spring. It is a Z bar, so it comes up, goes across, drops down behind the axle, goes out flat, and that's where your airbag sits. You got your torque rod. Now this sets your alignment, so if you're having alignment issues, you should definitely get your torque rods rebushed and get an alignment done. So here's your alignment shim. If these fall out, come loose, get an alignment done. Check for wear inside of here. Now these bushings aren't particularly great, but Let's go take a look at the rest of the suspension here. So we're just looking at the suspension here and you can see that this torque rod bushing is crumbled. It's missing some rubber. So this one I would classify as a maintenance issue. It hasn't gone into a safety issue because it's not loose. This one as well, crumbly, disintegrated, stuff like that. And this one as well. You can see that it is crumbling around the rubber. So I'd recommend getting these rebushed. The problem with rubber is it gets kind of squishy, soft uh, when it gets older, and it'll start cracking and crumbling and stuff like that. So if you see cracking and crumbling in your bushings, then usually the rubber is kind of degraded and it's time to rebush it. So that would be a maintenance thing, and we're gonna do some maintenance on this thing, get some torque rods rebushed for this guy. So the number one issue that we have on these trucks that we look for is loose U-bolts. So these have been loose for a little bit here. Uh, this is a liquid load, so uh, this can happen fairly quickly. Um, but definitely uh, anytime that you have loose U-bolts, cut them off, put new U-bolts on. Do not retighten them at all, ever, under any circumstances whatsoever. Cut them off, put new ones on. These U-bolts are all stretched out, bagged out, and garbage. We also got a loose shock bracket here. And you can see some loose bolts. You can see over here, you can see over here, this is uh, on top of the spring, and this here is underneath the spring. So we're actually going to take this apart, we're going to put this on top here, and then clamp it together, and it will not get loose again if we do that. So make sure when you're installing them, these go in between the spring and the, the beam that the airbag sits on. So yeah, we're going to fix that. Cut the U-bolts off. So we're gonna cut these U-bolts off and we're gonna diagnose the spring even further. So what we're gonna do now is it's loose. If you just throw a set of U-bolts on there, I would highly recommend not doing that until you check the spring. There's gonna be a locating spring that goes out from underneath the bottom of the spring pack and it'll locate into the block. Now, if that pin is sheared off, then you'll never be able to keep this tight ever again. So if that's sheared off, then we gotta put a new spring in it because that pin is part of the spring. You can't just weld new one in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jack up the vehicle, dump out the air. We're gonna stick a bottle jack underneath the back of the spring. We're just gonna jack it up. Once we jack it up, we'll be able to take that little spacer block out and we're gonna pull it out. And then we'll be able to assess how worn out everything is from it moving and being loose and stuff like that. And uh, if that block has cupped, then we're going to take that out, replace the block, get a nice flat surface for the spring to sit on. So these blocks actually will round because what'll happen is the spring will be rocking back and forth and it'll round that block out. So if you just put a fresh set of U-bolts and clamp it down, you're gonna be bending the spring around that curvature and it's really, 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 really easy to just split that spring right up the middle. So we don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is be able to just get a nice flat surface again and do it all correctly, basically. We want a flat surface for the spring to sit on, which means we'll probably end up replacing that spacer. The spacers are relatively cheap compared to a spring. So if the spring's good, replace the spacer, put a fresh set of U-bolts on, you're good to go. 
there's two different spacer types. There's a one inch thick one and a one and a half inch thick one. So, uh, you know, you might not have one in stock. Some don't have spacers. It goes straight onto the axle seat. Some of them have a U-bolt plate that goes in there, um, a torque rod plate. There's like so many different ways that they make these suspensions. So just check it all out, make sure everything's nice and flat and square and even so that when you tighten it, you're not just trying to bend the spring around it because the spring is strong, the spring is hard. And with all that preload on there, what's gonna happen is he's gonna do his next trip and he's gonna split the spring in half. And then he's gonna fix it today and then we'll fix it again next week. So we don't wanna do that. We're gonna take it apart and check it all out. So that'll be our next, next step of diagnostic. We're gonna pull everything out and just see how worn out it is. I assume it's gonna be worn out, they always are. Basically, these are the most common things that happen on the suspension. The other things that we're gonna look for is rotten airbags. We're also gonna look for wear pads. There's a wear pad right up in here. So there's your wear pad. So if there's a lot of meat in there, you can just uh, reuse them and just keep going with them. If you notice that the spring is rubbing uh, on that pad and it's worn it completely through, then you should replace them. Uh, there's usually uh, two little roll pins that are stuck into the side of the pad. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in there with a the bar and you're gonna snap or break them off and get that pad out of there. And then you're gonna take a little punch and you're gonna punch those little roll pins out of the side of the hanger. They'll go pushed right through. And then when you put the new one in, you push the pad in there. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll let the truck down and push the weight of the spring up against it so it's perfectly seated up into the top of the hanger. And then I'll just hammer the little roll pins. And it's just a polyurethane or a hard plastic, depending what version you get. And uh, those little roll pins will just seat themselves into that hard plastic and that's it. That's, they're not even bolted in or anything. They're just held in with the weight of the, the weight of the truck holds them in mostly. And those two little roll pins will just keep them from falling out. So like when you jack them up and stuff, so. But yeah, that's the diagnostic on this one. So what we're gonna do is next phase, we're gonna cut the U-bolts off, we're gonna jack it up, and we're gonna check out that spring, see how bad it is. Okay, so we got our part. There's your pin sticking out from your spring. It doesn't look terrible, does it? However, I can see that that plate has been wearing heavily into there. So we're gonna have to actually pull this off and grind that flat on my belt sander. Get that cleaned up and put back in there. We're taking the torque rods out anyway, so not a big deal. So we'll pull that whole thing right out. Take this off, rebush the torque rod, grind that off flat, go from there. Here's that plate I was talking about. That's completely rotted away. Lots of moisture in there. So that'll have to be replaced just for that. And then, look at that. Big wear grooves down there. That's worn down like an eighth of an inch or so. Is that lipping all the way down there? So this will be have to be replaced. And then that there will have to be pulled out and ground flat. If it's really bad, it'll have to be replaced. So we finished up the job. It's all assembled. We've got a new block underneath the spring and it's ready to go back out on the road again with some new U-bolts and we did the uh, rebush so the truck is done now. It's got a new spacer in between the spring and the axle seat. We grind the axle seat down. You can see how we use our six inch belt sander to do this. It's nice and wide. So what we do is we take the grinder and knock some of the high points off and then we get it nice and flat and square on our belt sander. We find this works really, really well. And these axle seats are pretty pricey. So we found this is a good fix and it usually uh, lasts for a whole bunch of years. Um, one of the other things that we do too is we make sure that we get an alignment done before we send it out on the road too because we replaced the bushings and the torque rods and because we're replacing the bushings and the torque rods we always like to give the truck an alignment. Uh, alignment was one of the reasons why the vehicle came into us. Torque rods and alignment. So I wanted to make sure that was all done for the customer and it's all good to go. Now one thing I do want to say if we're going to go back a couple minutes here and we're going to show the underside of the spring. So when you do this inspection, one thing I forgot to mention is that you really need to check the spring for cracking. Uh, there can be some significant cracking in the leaves and I can show you a couple pictures here of what that would look like. Inspect the springs if the cracks are deep and you got this, this far apart, put a new spring in it. 
really easy to break these springs once you take them apart and tighten the u-bolts back up on them if there's any kind of flaws weaknesses and stuff like that it'll look for them and it'll break them in half so take a look at the springs check for uh, sizable cracks and stuff like that um, you can always take a torch and burn the rust out so you just take your torch and then pull the trigger and then that'll allow you to burn the rust out of the cracks and stuff just to show how deep they are if there's any significant cracking just replace the spring so yeah that's pretty much it we got the job done and it's on its way it's already back to work right now so um, quick little video just show you how to diagnose a Henderson suspension it's uh, we call it the Henderson air ride or the HAS suspension so so it's a very common suspension. There's probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them out there with that suspension type under there. So you'll probably come across it in your career. So, so that's how we diagnose them. This is what we look for. And uh, hopefully you got a little bit of uh, education out of this. If you like this type of series, um, give us a thumbs up, put a comment down below. If you think I missed anything, uh, I think I was pretty thorough, but I don't know, I can forget things. So put it down in the comments down below if you think I forgot anything and I'll catch you next time. All right, have a good day.